Hi, everyone. Welcome to The Ship It Show. I'm Tara Strong and my very handsome co-host, Mr. Greg Seip. Say hi, Greg. Hello, everyone. I love you. Dog bless you all. It's a puppy party. It's a puppy party. Welcome to The Ship It Show, yo! We are very excited for this week. Both Greg and I have played roles in the Spider-Man universe. I got to play MJ. And I got to play... Iron Fist, the first actor to ever bring Iron Fist to life. What? So we are thrilled to swing into this ship, and uh, we have an amazing panel for you guys. And let's set sail for MJ and Spider-Man. Before we get started, please like and subscribe us on YouTube. Go to The Ship It Show and leave us a review at the podcast. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say and any of your suggestions for future episodes. We, of course, will still be taking polls each week so that we can explore all the ships we can. That's right. <laughs> this is The Ship It Show! Spider-Man and MJ, another canon ship this week. How exciting. And even more exciting, we have some amazing guests. But first, of course, I have to introduce my super hot co-star, Mr. Greg Seip. Say hello, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I love you all, especially you, Mama Tara Strong. And uh, this is going to be really a, a fun, special show because some of my favorite people in the whole world are on today. That's so true. Should we let everybody introduce themselves and how they are connected to Spidey World? Yeah, yeah, let's get All right, the love let's start, growing. Let's start with Kevin, because he's first on, under, on, he's like right under. Wow. All right. <laughs> big, big shoes to fill. Um, I'm Kevin Shinnick, and I was the what, showrunner for Marvel Spider-Man. It sounds all-encompassing, but the last series on Disney XD was called Marvel Spider-Man. But I think I also have the distinction of being the only person to write Spider-Man for the comics, the stage, and the screen. Uh, and I'm not talking about the Julie Taymor one. What we didn't know was that <laughs> about a decade before then, uh, I wrote a, the first ever feature length Spider-Man play that played at Radio City Music Hall. So that was quite what? an experience. So yeah, I consider myself uh, an expert on Spidey. That's awesome. That's incredible. Let's bring it back, that. man. Yeah, yeah I, I only knew you to be an awesome writer. Um, also director and actor. We had so much fun doing Mad TV together. I we think did. that's where we met, right? We did, absolutely. In fact, yeah. right behind me, I've got the uh, poster from Mad. We had such a great time on that so, show. I loved those sessions so much. And I, I didn't, I mean, you are like some weird ass unicorn. You do so many different things <laughs> very well. Like well, Greg you. and I can't draw. I mean, Greg can't do much else other than what are you talking about i make amazing but, drawings of stick figures i, I can't mean, draw either though you know it's 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 all i can write and i can maybe convey what i'd like to see on the page you can do a lot of awesome things though so that's good the only other thing i want you to say before we move on to og is how people find you on social media please uh and you can find me on social media at at kevin shinnick and that's s-h-i-n-i-c-k Okay, awesome. I'm excited to deep dive into all things Spidey with you, Kevin. But first, we're going to introduce the rest of our guests, starting with next, Mr. O.G. Banks <laughs> in the house. Say hello, O.G. Hello, and please O.G. Tell the world <laughs> a little bit about who you are and how you got involved with Spidey and what it means to you. Um, uh, I am O.G. Banks the third. Ultimate Spider-Man is what I was in, uh, playing Power Man. Power uh, Man! Luke Woo! Alongside my boy Greg Sipes. <laughs> namaste, namaste, namaste. <laughs> Some of the best sessions in the world. Um, and then in the last yeah. season, I played Miles Morales. Uh, so yeah, I would go back and forth playing yeah. Power Man and, and Miles Morales. <laughs> and it, was, uh, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. Oh, amazing. I love that character so much. I love the Spider Verse movie too, and learning yes. all about that origin story and it's so awesome. OG, thank you so much for joining us. And also Adam. please tell people where to find you on social media. It's just OG Banks, uh, O-G-I-E-B-A-N-K-S on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. It's just my name. Whoa, whoa. Yay, yay, yay. And of course, last but definitely not least, he is a Spider-Man God, maybe <laughs> only second to Mr. Stan Lee, maybe, yeah. maybe. Ladies and gentlemen, Court Lang. Thank you. Um, I was at Marvel Animation for its 12 year lifespan. And um, after Stan Lee, I'm the person who's produced the most episodes and specials and things of Spider-Man animation hmm. and got to work with all these lovely people. 
Same That's off. right. You're so amazing. You're so amazing. You're, <laughs> like, you're, but you are also someone that does a million different things really well. And you are also a total nerd and understand yes. this fandom. And, you know, I, I, it's funny. I was like, I always prep and learn backstories, but I knew today, like, I didn't need to learn anything because between you guys, I know you know everything and way more than I do. So I'm excited to sort of explore that knowledge. And of course, the ship with MJ, which I got to play. Yeah. I was like, every voiceover chick wants to play MJ. So that was pretty cool that I got to do that. Yeah. Um, so I'm curious, Court, um, if you can start us off with how the ship started with Spidey and MJ and a little bit about that backstory. Sure. And I think Kevin can weigh in too. You know, so MJ was introduced 55 years ago. So this is a long love story. They didn't even like each other at first. He considered her sort of a, a flight party girl. Uh, but after Gwen's death, uh, they have become the, the love of each other's lives. But with Spider-Man, every time he wins a Spider-Man, he usually loses something in his personal life. And his relationship with MJ usually took the hit. Um, she loves him because he's so smart and because he has such a big heart. But she's uh, a little bit, she's definitely out of his league. Um, he knows that. And so he he barely holds on to her. There's always this space between them because his life as Spider-Man always gets in the way. And sometimes super villains and sometimes demons who throw spells on them and ruin their lives at various points. And so it makes him more heroic that he decides to put on his costume and be a hero, even though he loses out so much personally. And so that sort of star cross lover between them is essential to his persona. Um, MJ asks herself, she's grown a lot as a character over this time too. Um, and, and she is really this perfect, but flawed, but just gorgeous, glamorous, sexy, sassy, a little bit of trouble, but a whole lot of heart, which is honestly why we cast you. Cause I just finished two seasons of the superhero squad show with you and you are an MJ in real life. Mm -hmm. And, Thanks. and that was, there's three reasons we cast you though, but that was the main one. Aww. And I was going to add to it, which is amazing about I find amazing about MJ is she was never intended to be the love interest. You yeah. know, it was Gwen. In fact, those who remember Happy Days, she was like the Jenny Piccolo of <laughs> of, of Spider-Man where they mentioned her so often, but you never saw her. She was always the yeah. girl that Aunt May wanted to pair Peter up with. And he was always like, no, no. And they showed her like behind a plant and not until another year after that did John Romita finally draw her and he based her on like Anne Margaret. Uh, yeah. And, and oh, so she comes wow. in and, you know, she's so great. I will say it again, like you, Tara, she took over the room. And even though they kept trying to make Gwen this, the, the, the girlfriend audiences and even writers just kept writing to MJ and then she just took off and they couldn't resist it. That's so cool. And also they're one of the few ships that in the comic book land have actually been married, right? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Catwoman and Batman, that marriage didn't work out. Saifi, do you have any questions for our gorgeous panel today? Do I have any questions? I mean, I just, I love reminiscing about our times together. Just yeah. some of the funnest sessions of my life were that with this group of actors creating Ultimate Spider-Man. And again, um, I didn't even know I was going to play Iron Fist. I know this is not about Iron Fist right now, but it really does. <laughs> it's just such a special thing to be a part of this universe. And now it's kind of exploring these kind of alternate universes that fans have been in love with for so long. So I think that's one of the most mu magical parts about making cartoons is the fact that people really get to be a part of our universe and, and take it and grow with, you know, from their love, all of a sudden these new relationships are spawned and maybe that inspires a comic, the comic book writer to write, these stories are, it's just amazing to see love in action in these shows because there's just so much love that goes into them, not just by the creators and the, the writers and the, the artists and the animators, but the fans have so much to do with bringing these, these shows to life. And I just, I love, I love that. I love how much uh, there's so much. Well, love and you were characters. talking about this, the studio time together. Do you guys want to share some of your favorite stories of in studio sure i mean adventures yeah it's like a, like like us on teen titans go we're just it was a cool like um maybe i feel like it's the breakfast club a little bit yeah. it felt like <laughs> it felt like the breakfast club and we get in trouble a lot because we just wouldn't we, we don't stop laughing and oh, cool. uh, we did get in trouble a lot. <laughs> yeah, all the time yeah collab would reprimand you yeah. Yeah. Right. Give give us a few little. Uh, well, why don't each of you give us a favorite session? Uh, one, or... one of my favorite sessions is uh, 
you know what? Every session was my favorite when Greg, just Greg walking into the room because he always made an entrance, and <laughs> and he would always and he would always do his karate moves. <laughs> he would, oh my he would god! Always do his karate moves to get us into character, and uh, and then we would also have like songs to get us going throughout. Man, I wish no. I wish my vocal booth was big enough. I want to do a flying front kick right yeah, now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. How about you, Court? Any favorites? Well, sessions? yes. Uh, one of the second secret reasons that we cast you is that we did a couple scenes of Superior Squad Show, and you and Stan did a lot of scenes together. Uh, Tara played everybody from Herbie the Robot to the Scarlet mm-hmm. Witch. <laughs> and, um, and Stan was sharp as a tack, loved acting, really a ham, um, but couldn't hear worth a damn. Um, his hearing was shot. And so somebody would have to sit next to him and listen to the voice director's direction and talk to Stan right in his ear. And he loved working with Tara the best. <laughs> And so <laughs> he was going to do a, a, a run in Ultimate Spider-Man. He ended up doing a dozen episodes as the Secret Shield agent who was um, thought to be a janitor at Midtown High. And so watching the two of you together and how much fun he had and how sweet you were with him, those were my favorite memories. Oh, he That's- was so great. He, he came in and he was in great shape. He was so <laughs> yeah. grateful, so happy to oh, be yeah. there. And I I first met him at one of the Comic Cons. Regina introduced me and he was such a doll. And I remember being in the session and I said, how, like, what is your secret? You look so great and you're still being creative and awesome. And he said, never retire and yeah. do Woo. what you love. Yeah. And then I said to him, and, and and also he was modest. Like I said, how does it feel that your brain created these, like, these iconic characters? And he said, Tara, I always had a good team. Yeah. And I thought that was very sweet. And session wise, Court, you will probably remember this. He, he loved me so much that if we were beside each other, you had to move him across from me because he wanted to look at me when he <laughs> yes. saying my line. He would look at you instead of talk to the mic. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. That's so the sweet. best oh, stories God. ever. I love he was the him. best. I, that guy. Yeah. I, uh, I, yeah. I had to... Shout um, out to Stanley, patron. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I got it. to... We worked with him a lot on... on um, you know, a couple of sessions for Marvel Spider-Man and he came in and we were fortunate enough to have him there. But the first time I worked with him was on Mad, which was kind of a coup because Mad is owned by DC, but we wanted him to do a voice. And so he came in, he was like, oh, I love Mad and all. And as Tara knows, whenever someone goes into the booth and I'm voice directing them, I want to I want to know, can they hear me OK? And, you know, is, is the sound all right? So when he got in there, I just said to him, I said, Stan, how do I sound? And he said, like Orson Welles. And I, <laughs> I said, let's just go home because my day is not going to get any better than that. And you know what, Terry, we, you just said it when you said what's um, the key. And he said, have a great team. But, you know, I, I'll, I'll refer to him so often and so many levels of this business where, if you remember correctly, he created Spider-Man because they thought they were going down. They thought he was going to lose his job. Uh-huh. And his wife said, Look, just do whatever you want to do. You're going to lose your job anyway. Mm. Swing for the fences. And he created Spider-Man. And it's just, you know, it's in those moments that you're like, what the hell? What do I have to lose? And so, you know, it's amazing. I needed to hear that right now. That's so beautiful. Right? That's it's so true. And because if you think about it, we all, you know, we all know Spider-Man so well. But for the the listeners to remind them that up until that point, if you were a kid, you were a sidekick. And Stan was the one who said, no, this kid needs to be the hero. And so that's how it began. Again, he swung for the fences or swung for the fences. And, and now we're here talking about it all these wow. years later. Yeah. One oh tiny yeah. other Stan beautiful, tidbit beautiful. is that before he got into comics, he really just needed a job during the 40s as a teenager to, to make money for his family. But what he really wanted to be was a Broadway actor. And so coming in for voice recording sessions was a little bit of a dream fulfilled for him every single time. He always made it clear, I'll do anything you want me to do, anytime. Yeah, yeah. he's I great. Love that. I love that so much. <laughs> he, he really was. He was such a sweetheart. Okay, so since this is about love and yes. ships, I just want you each to sort of give your... Um, funniest stories of either fans writing or drawing or something that you were like, um, that's kind of weird. We kind we kind of like to get a little weird sometimes, or I don't know, just a funny story about MJ and Spidey being in love. And then OG, we can talk about 
you and me later. Okay. <laughs> First episode of Ultimate Spider-Man. We knew that all, not a lot of eight-year-old boys wanted to see Peter and MJ kissing. Uh, but I wanted that moment to know that they were sort of meant to be together. And we show them as kids, which is very not canon for the comic books, uh, playing together as best friends and trying their first kisses with each other, which you got to act out with Drake Bell <laughs> and was just really a fanship thing for me. Oh, that's amazing. Funny. I love that. That's amazing. I love that. Okay, Kevin, how about you? Any like funny, um, any, even if it's someone at a con that you met? Yeah, like, you know what it is? It's a, it's a little outside of what you just asked, but it includes Spider-Man and MJ. So um, I told you I was doing that, uh, the Radio City Music Hall uh, production of Spider-Man. It toured the country for like 40 cities, you know, and one of them, they were in wow. Chicago. It was really great. It was really great. And so they were in Chicago before coming to New York. And we had all these interviews set up and like New York one for New York was going to, as a television show, they were going to interview Spider-Man and MJ and all this stuff. I'm so excited. And then the not like the night before the morning before Chicago gets hit with a blizzard. And so our guys are stuck in Chicago. So I called the network and I say, can we push this? And they were like, no, this is our one window. And I was like, ah, oh. so then I called the show and I said, FedEx me that Spider-Man costume. So they, <laughs> so they they send the costume. There's a longer story where I've told my wife, if I look ridiculous, I'm not going to do this. But I wind up going on this show and they interview me, at, interview me as the director and the writer. And then I leave and they stop the cameras and they want to interview Spider-Man. So I come back on as Spider-Man. But to, oh what, to what Court said is... By the way, but photos, so photos, or it doesn't matter, buddy. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, right? I, I don't think we can find, I've made it sure you can't find this video, and here's why. Photos As or court, it didn't happen. <laughs> court uh, mentioned it earlier, where the great thing about Spider-Man and Peter is that usually a win for one is a loss for the other, and it's never just like, did it, and it's all clean. So I go into this, I put this Spider-Man costume on and I go there and it's amazing. When you put this costume on, you feel like Spider-Man. I understand all the cosplay, you know, to be truthful. Well, I had the costume on when my wife walked in for work and I'll never forget her line, which she was like, oh, and then she goes, well, I see why he wears it now. And I, I thought, I thought, yeah, but the, but the funny thing was, I'm doing this, and they wanted the intro. They intro me. I come into the top of the stairs. Guys, I just instinctively thought I could do a flip down <laughs> into the thing. I felt so much like Spider-Man that I, I leapt yeah. and flipped and was like, whack, right on, right on my back. Oh, no. and I, I got up and was still stumbling. And I think they cut that part from the interview, but it reminded me that Poor Spidey can't ever get the full win. So that was my, that was my little I, I, anecdote. I think that's Sipes amazing. is right. I think we need pictures. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's gotta be video. I'm not sure. There, I'm sure there's video. Cause I saw it on we television. We can show video sadly. on here. We can show all, all right, that. We'll look for it. <laughs> Luke will find it. All right. Luke will find it. Yeah. OG, do you have a fun, yeah. um, favorite, uh, make fan event? Or something yeah. Like that? Um, my, my, my favorite is, uh, Comic cons and the different styles of Spider Man that I will see. Um, everybody has their version of Spider Man, whether it's like a, the full on costume or half the costume or made from clothes that they found in their, you know, in their closet before, <laughs> or, or maybe it's like the full on costume. They just went like full on, full loaded. <laughs> um, but I was at this one co uh, Comic Con on the East Coast and this one. This one guy dressed up as Spider-Man really took a liking to me. And <laughs> the next thing I know, he left for a minute and came back with like 15 or 20 other Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> but were, uh, they were all dressed different. They were all dressed Amazing. They all cool. had their own style. And that's what I, that's what I love. I, I love seeing how the fans have their own style with it. You know, even so, you know, because Spider-Man has that iconic, you know, iconic look, but everybody kind of makes it their own a little bit. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Comic Con it was great because I was surrounded by Spider-Man and uh, Harry Potter's. <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I love that. Um, speaking of Comic Con, can we bring on our cosplayers? You guys want to hang out for a minute? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect segue from Kevin's cosplay story. Yes, right. There she yeah. is. 
is. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Lindsay. Can you guys hear me? My okay? God, she's. Yes, welcome, yes, Lindsay. You're wow. Stunning. Oh, my yeah. God. Can you believe this? What a face. I can't um, believe I Lindsay... just heard that from Tara Strong. So my life is made. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Oh, my God. I love that top one. Can you guys, guys see that top one where she's hugging <laughs> Spidey? Aww. That's awesome. <gasps> And that wow. escalator shot, hey. holy hot. Oh. <laughs> Ship overload. Ship oh, overboard. Jesus. Look at this Ow. girl. My yeah. gosh. Beautiful. You can see the guy smiling under that yeah. mask. <laughs> exactly, right? The guy exactly. smiling under I that I met spider. him oh, at God. the con. I actually met him at the con there. Never talked to him before in my life. And he was like, I actually have like a photographer, like all set up for a shoot. Like, would you oh, want to do this with me? I was like, oh. yeah. Okay. You're like, yeah, Lindsay, you, you're, you're, sp you're sporting, you're sporting MJ hair in the photos, but Gwen hair here, which do you prefer? Oh, I don't know. I've always been blonde. So I, I've always been interested in going red, but it's such a long process to get back. Right. I think, right. think I'm going to keep the blonde and plus Gwen Stacy. She just kind of just does her own thing, more independent, you know, doesn't need no man. It's great. And, she, and she's spider Gwen, <laughs> so you're all set. Right, I haven't done that one yet. I definitely want to try and do Ooh, that. That's on my next. list of things to do. Nice. That's next. Well, Lindsay, tell us how you got started and what MJ means to you and what cosplay means to you. By the way, I'll dress up as Spider-Man anytime. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, we know, <laughs> we know, we know. Oh, and one more thing in case I forget, please tell everybody where to find you on Instagram, your your social handles. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, Um. so I just started my cosplay handle. I was just originally just posting them on my normal um, Instagram, but um, I decided that since I was investing a little bit more time into actually going to conventions, stuff like that, I wanted to go ahead and create my own um, page for that. So that's L.B. Cosplays. Um, so yeah, I only went to like one con before the most recent one at KatsuCon um, before that. And I was only 15 years old. I really didn't know anything about, you know, conventions, cosplaying, anything like that. But I always loved um, dressing up as a kid and being in, you know, musical theater, stuff like that. So um, I had a few friends that kind of got me into it and they were like, well, why don't we just go? And I was like, okay, like, yeah, sure. Let's do it. Found like a Sailor Venus costume, just went, had absolutely no clue what I was doing. And I had such a fun time, met amazing people. And I decided that I wanted to do it again. Um, but since I was in high school and college, um, a lot of people didn't really have as much of a positive, you know, reaction to, you know, the, you know, cosplay community. So I was, you know, a little bit discouraged to do it for a while. And then I just decided, you know, I'm 24 now. I don't give a hoot about what anyone mm. says, anything like that. So I just decided to uh, go to the KatsuCon, get like three different costumes and just go ball to the wall. <laughs> amazing. Wow, amazing. amazing. I know that's the thing I love about cosplayers and particularly at Comic-Cons because we've said this before, nobody's weird because everybody's weird. And you could play a character regardless of how old you are, your body size, who you love, who you worship, the color of your skin. Like every single person is wanted, welcomed, loved and cherished. And it's like this big, beautiful, inclusive community. It's like Did, one um, big ship it show. Yeah. It's a big ship of show. <laughs> um, and tell us how MJ inspired you and what what inspired you to, and do you make your own costumes? Do you buy them? Yeah, so that one in particular, um, I just found it on Amazon. Okay. It was just like one of the ones that was like hidden in the very dark depths of Amazon. And I seemed to work okay for me, but I got the wig from Eva Hair Official. So um, that's where I go for like all of my cosplay uh, wigs, stuff like that. But um, I decided to do MJ just because you know, you always see her as this, you know, very vulnerable person, like the girl that always needed to be rescued. But I wanted to do a different twist on it where, you know, she's the superhero and she's the one that like kind of has her own identity. Um, so that's why I kind of wanted to have her in the suit instead um, and maybe do like a gender flip or, or maybe like roles reversed. Um, so that way I could save my Peter Parker. That's kind of oh. where I was with that. Oh, I nice. love that. That's fun. That's hot. He's hot. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. I have to say to Lindsay, and this is super nerdy, she has like a John Romita senior face. Uh, yeah, she does. Juice. She does. She has um, a classically beautiful face with strong mouth and eyes and looks exactly like Mary Jane in that first panel yeah. where you see our face. And I think it's great that you've done the gender flip fun. I actually do gender flip 
cosplay myself. Not yeah. that you will ever see that on my social media. But yes, we will. But I, I think pictures. it's fantastic because I'd like to read that story uh, because she'd be a totally different spider person. <laughs> um, you know, Peter's shy. He cracks jokes because he's nervous or what have you. But MJ has always been confident and comfortable in herself and her body and knows what she wants and goes for it. So she would be a very different hero. For sure. That's definitely what I look up to, for sure. I think that, like, the quips of, like, you know, Kristen Dunst and how she, you know, just was like, go get him, Tiger. Just that confidence, I'm like, I'm bringing that into my real life. You have it. You can hear it in your <laughs> yeah. voice. It's really cool. Mm. Totally. Oh my God. Totally. Oh my God. I love that. And I love that so much. And I love the more we can um, strengthen female characters mm -hmm. and make them their own power separate of the men in their world is awesome, too. Um, and Kevin, of course, who we just learned, wrote the show at the Rock Kent or whatever it was. <laughs> what, are you like, my, wait, what are you, my the mom? Show? The show, like, what? No, Spider-Man at Radio City Music Hall. But Lindsay, what I love so far is, is that story you told, which could be a, a story in a comic in itself, of the fact that you cosplayed and your, your inner circle wasn't really supporting you, and then you took a breather, and then we're like, you know what? That's something I really enjoyed, and I'm going to do it again no matter what. And right there, there's the hero. You know, there's the person who can say, as you said, who gives a hoot? <laughs> exactly. Gives, uh, <laughs> Thank you so Aww, much. That I love the that. world to me. Aww. And OG, of course, who is um, an amazing actor and voice actor that has been in the Spider Verse. I don't know how long now. For a while, but I wanted to say I love how you did that gender switch thing. You know, having having Mary J in the Spider suit. I thought that was like killer. Thank you so much. Super Ella. duper hot. Um, if you came here to get your ego boosted, we succeeded. <laughs> I just can't even believe that this is happening. This is the best day of my life to date. This is awesome. <laughs> so what do you want to say to young um, people that want to cosplay but fear they're going to be judged or insecure about going out for the first time? Maybe give them some wisdom since you're a little bit further down the road. Oh, I mean, I guess just do it. Um, you know, I, I found that the more that I was comfortable with what I was doing and the more that I shared it and the more that I posted it for that matter. A lot of people were like, that actually looks like so much fun. And, you know, every one of us grew up idolizing these superheroes or wanting to be them for Halloween or, or being them for Halloween. And, and now you get to do that, like as an adult where you have like the muscles or you have that, that imagine it's imagination still there. And I think that that's one of the coolest things is now you can do that and and there is a community there that is welcoming you with open arms and is going to be your lifelong friends and i think that that is so neat um and a lot of people think it's a like even cooler than they even imagined to begin with they, even if they just tried to it's an amazing community and i attest to the feeling of cosplay giving me so much joy like I, i've cosplayed as beast boy recently in the last couple of comic cons ago and to have i've done it a couple of times but the, the last one i really felt because I got to walk around Comic-Con as Beast Boy. It was just so empowering, so I get it. I'm afraid, though, to dress up as Iron Fist because I might not ever change back to Greg Stiles. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Such a Zen master, it might feel way too good to dress up as Iron Fist. You know? oh my well, God. you know, Court was Court was good enough with others to cast me as Bruce Banner across the Marvel yeah. Universe this last thing. So what? I just cosplay as Bruce Banner walking around. No one seems to stop me. But because I always joke, the kids always said, when's he going to change back to Bruce? Who wants the Hulk when they can have Bruce? <laughs> oh, my God. You're so funny. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, Lindsay, thank you for joining us today. You're absolutely gorgeous. And you have a beautiful, strong um, personality and energy about you. We're just so happy that you could join us today and keep on just doing all, all the amazing empowering stuff that you're doing. Thank you all so much. This has been literally, like I said, the best day of my life. <laughs> well, the good news yes, is it's Lindsay. only going to get better, Lindsay. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it was a pleasure to meet Thanks. you all. Namaste. Oh my God, could, Namaste. She, could she be any more? She was so sweet. Um, well, you know, we talk about Stan and you talk about all the different variations on Peter and MJ and really all these characters. One thing that's interesting is we're getting to a point now where there have been so many different universes. And I don't mean that in terms of the multiverse to, to begin with. I'm talking about comics, television, movies, um, cartoon strips. You know, uh, Stan had a cartoon strip in the paper that he would do with Spider-Man, those who might remember. And in that, he married Peter and MJ long before they married in the comics. And so oh, wow. it was a little out of sync. 
you know? And so of course we have our own uh, comics and shows that diverge into their own direction. But what's amazing is, is the great thing about Marvel is they don't really reboot. Canon stays Canon. They may say, Oh, you know, Mephisto changed the universe. No one remembers this, but they keep what was there. And I think mm -hmm. we're with this multiverse that the movie has kind of uh, stumbled upon is you not only get to include the existing properties that diverged, but now you get to include everybody's fantasy of this. You get to include Stan's version that married in the, co in the mm -hmm. comic strip. You get, to, you get to include Lindsay's version of Mary Jane as Spider-Man. So I think it opened the door for so many possibilities that legitimize people's ideas, even if they're not able to have a show like we did or write comics like I do, or, you know, they can say, oh, like Lindsay did, I want MJ as Spider-Man. And look, it exists. And now that we've had the Spider-Verse and we're gonna have a sequel to that, it's like, yeah, it's out there. Court, do you have any like um, dream ideas about this love ship? Like if you could do anything in the world with this ship. I would like Mary Jane to be a superhero for They've always avoided this in the comics because they wanted to keep the, the tension between his love life as Peter and his superhero life as Peter Parker, as, as Spider-Man. She is, um, in, in many ways, all the things that he wish, wishes he could be. And like I said, she's confident. She believes in herself. She goes after what she wants. And Gorgeous, she be, a redhead. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> she is. She's a kick-ass woman who, if she had superpowers, would be the best superhero of all time. And so, mm -hmm. so I'd like to see him as the boyfriend and see how that plays out. He could create all kinds of cool scientific gear for her. You know, he could help her. I, I'd be interested to see the roles reversed. I would like to see reversals in the sense of like, um, like uh, the Miles Morales and Spider-Man, like swapping powers, you know, like him getting like the new Miles Morales powers and, and Miles getting like the old Spider-Man powers, you know? And, or, or even like Luke Cage and Iron Fist switching, switching costumes and powers that one, one <laughs> would, be, would be hilarious. I could just see like um, Luke, Luke uh, Power Man just busting out of Iron Fist as a, you know, you know suit. <laughs> and, 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 and uh, Iron Fist wearing Luke Cage's like oversized t-shirt. <laughs> that would be, you know. Didn't we, by the way, didn't we do an episode like that on Ultimate Spider-Man already? Oh, I'm joking. I'm joking. No. <laughs> but, 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 um, but already Miles has way more powers than yeah, the regular Spider-Man. Yeah. So that would be fun no, it to would explore. Be funny if, he's, if he's like, you know, yeah. he's, these old powers, you know, what happened to my... Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It sounds like a, like a bad dream sequence that could be part of Ultimate Spider-Man season, the next Sight new the, season. That was the perfect segue to someone that I am crazy about, that I'm so excited to introduce to the world. If you haven't heard of her, she is dream interpreter to the stars. She is so brilliant. I want to talk to her every single day. I found her on Google and she's like my favorite thing I've ever found on Google. She's better than Amazon because she can unlock your mind. Everybody say hello to Lori. Say hi, Lori. Lori. Hi, Lori. Hi, Lori. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh my God, we're so excited. So before we start, just so we don't forget, please tell everybody where to find you on social media as well as your booking site, which I could use every single day. Okay, so you can find me online at laurielowenberg.com, but Laurie Lowenberg is kind of hard to spell. So if you just Google dream expert on the first one that pops up, that's where you can set up a phone consultation with me. I'm also on Twitter at Laurie Lowenberg, or you can put the dream expert and that'll Bring me up. And also on Instagram, Laurie Lowenberg, L-A-U-R-I-L-O-E-W-E-N-B-R-G, all one word. And that's where you can also check out my cool artwork. Well. I was just going to say, it's so coincidental that we were speaking and I thought of you for this show and you happen to have a connection to MJ. Do you want to share with everybody how amazing that is and, and how you first, well, of course you're a gorgeous redhead, but um, the first time you sort of came across her and, and your art, it's amazing by the way. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, um, a really good friend of mine who's been doing radio for years and years and years is a huge Spider-Man fan. And he told me I remind him of MJ. And I, this was years ago. I didn't know 
MJ, what's that? So I looked at, I was like, oh, I can see how he could see me and her. And so I've been a fan of MJ ever since. I actually had a client ask me to draw my version of MJ. And now you have a client that voices MJ. How weird is that? It's like everything's come full circle. It's yeah, crazy. <laughs> knowing what you know about the other side, I'm sure it's not coincidental. You never know. Please also tell the world, um, what you do and how you do it. And Sipes, I know you don't know her, but um, I will have like a crazy dream about escalators and shopping malls and or me. flying bats and of course, Greg Sipes. And I'll, <laughs> I'll like log on for an appointment with Lori and I'll have one or two dreams. I'm like, tell me what this means. And you're always so insightful in things that I wouldn't automatically go, oh, right. And it's like you, you sort of tap into people's subconscious. And I just want to know what your process is, how you got there, like how you got into it and how you do it. So it's important to know that, that this isn't some sort of psychic gift. It is, I study dream psychology. So this is based in science and understanding subconscious thought. So what you dream at night is not random nonsense ever, ever, ever. It is a, mm. actually, it is a continuation of your thought stream from the day. So whatever you deal with today, whatever you think about today, whatever affects you today is going to be commented on tonight by your subconscious and your subconscious is helping you with your struggles, with your goals, with your relationships, with every single part of your life. Your subconscious has answers for you. In fact, all the answers you ever have that you ever will need are built right in and they're presented to you at night when you dream. And so I studied dream psychology after my grandfather died when I was 19. I'd been interested in dreams my whole life. I can remember them since I was like two, three years old. But it wasn't until after my grandfather died, he was the first person close to me in my life that ever died. And I went into a, a deep depression. Two weeks later, I had this dream where he and I were walking arm in arm through this museum and I knew he was dead. And so I asked him, what's it like where you are? And he said, I can't tell you that. But what I can tell you is that it's secure. And then he gave me a hug and he walked up this staircase and I woke up and I could smell his old spice. I could feel him around me. And I was like, oh my God, what just happened? So that's the dream that propelled me to study dream psychology. I wanted to find out why do we do this? What does it mean? What is the purpose? I heard moving on is like uh, taking off an old pair of tight shoes. I think that it would be like that. Yeah, we're just getting rid of this shell and then going into the ether, you know, and be, becoming one with that energy that's out there. So, oh you, so you dream of MJ all the time? Is that what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> uh, well, let, let's talk about that, actually, because... It is, since our show is all about love, it is interesting how much one dreams about love relationships, conflict yes. and love relationships. Why do we dream about love and conflict and love so much? A good portion of our dreams are commenting on our love life because, you know, relationships are a big part of the human experience. And that's one thing we all want to get right, because when a relationship goes wrong, it hurts and it can it can ripple into people around you and, and your job and everything. So, you know, our dreams are, are trying to help us get it right. Our dreams are a built-in problem solver. So when something's going wrong in a relationship or when we're in a relationship that's wrong for us and we're not paying attention to it, our dreams will scream at us and send us red flags. Okay, so here are some common symbols that will show up in your dreams that are very likely commenting on a relationship you're in. So, ready? Mm -hmm. Ready. Let me know if you get any of these in your dreams. Mm -hmm. The most common symbol that will be connected to a relationship in your real life is when you dream of a dog. Yes. My dog is in my dream every night. Really? Every night. Yeah. My, every night, Wing Man G is in my dreams. It's amazing. I'm so grateful. I, I, call him, I literally call him my dream chaser. Okay. Grab so. Him. Oh, do you have him with you? Yeah, let me get him. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> he brings him to every voiceover session and Wingman just sits by his side oh. or jumps on me. He's really, he loves me a lot. I really can't even find him right now. I, what? My, my, my dream state in this dream is, I literally have not <laughs> I have never heard you say I can't find Wingman. 
No, no, he's like under a pile of clothes and I'm just, I can't even look at the clothes right now or, or dig through the pile of clothes to find him. I just, maybe you can right. interpret that when, when you're overflowing with like a mountain of clothes. You know, Nickelodeon might be watching you right now. So I feel we're not going to talk. We're not going to talk. with a mountain of clothes? Well, if you can't find your dog under it, it's a bit of a problem. Worry. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so dogs in a dream. So whether it's your actual dog you have right now or a dog you used to have or just a dream dog that doesn't actually exist. Dog Dogs will very often be trying to help you with a relationship because the nature of a dog is it's man's best friend. You want to pay attention to what's happening to the dog in the dream as well as the state of the dog in a dream. If, if the dog is threatening you, biting you, attacking you, you're afraid of the dog, look at your relationships. What relationship feels that way? What relationship has you feeling like you're under attack? You know, if the dog is sick or dying, is your relationship in danger? Does your relationship need to be healed in some way you know is is the dog lost that's a good indication you lost your way in the relationship you don't know which direction this relationship is going have you had any dog dreams tara yeah i had one um not that long ago that a dog in the street um in front of my house was injured hmm. um which of course scares me a lot because uh, you know we're such big animal lovers and we of course do everything in our power to keep our pets safe. But like on that off chance that a dog gets out, like uh, I get so scared if my dog like just is a little too close to the street, you know, it's our yeah. job to protect them. So I know that's one of my fears, even though I'm super careful. If you were calling me with that dream, you know, I'd ask you, okay, so you're obviously very cautious about your dog, but let's turn this on you. Is there a relationship in your life that's Feels like it's been run over by a truck. <laughs> that, that's actually, yes, that's very true. You're uh. psychic, Lori. <laughs> so another symbol in our dreams that will likely be commenting on our relationship is when you dream of water. So because water tends to reflect our emotional states at the time of the dream and relationships are very emotional. So you want to see the water in your dream to be clear, calm, inviting. You want to be swimming in it, having a great time, maybe even seeing beautiful fish in it. Um, but if the water is threatening, you know, if it's like a flood, flood waters would indicate a situation or a bad relationship is getting increasingly worse, just as a flood c continues to get increasingly worse. Um, like my mountain of clothes. Exactly like that. <laughs> so you want, if, if water is dirty, muddy, that can symbolize depression or it can symbolize you're feeling very unclear about this relationship. There's a lot of things murking it up. If you dream of a boat or a ship, that's a big time relationship dream because relationship, you know, two ships ship. passing. Uh -huh. Ship it. <laughs> there you go. Dreams love wordplay. So if you can find, you know, a wordplay in your dream, you're likely going to find a big part of the message. So, you know, wow, that's so cool. In your own dreams, um, do you stay lucid a lot of the times? You wake up and go, oh, I know exactly what that meant. There are some times when I'm interpreting the dream while it's happening. Oh my God. That's so cool. I hate it when that happens because it takes the fun out of it. Yeah, wow. That's so I'll sometimes cool. dream other people's dreams. You know, after I get oh, off with the client and then that wow. night, some of their imagery will show up in my dreams. So, wow. What do you think the difference between dream, the dream state and this reality are? I mean, because it's all created by the, the mind. The brain is making everything that we're seeing. Is there really a difference between this dream? And <laughs> right. <laughs> is this the dream and is our dream state reality? Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, for me and Tara, we play, we also get to exist in all these different realities all the time and all these different mm -hmm. cartoon realities and live action movies, TV shows, et cetera. They're all like more dreams, dream states that we get to play in. And as an actor, I feel like this, it, there's not a lot of difference between it all. It's just kind of us in these different dream states playing and experiencing these different realms. It's, it's wild. And yeah, like and parallel do, universes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you can certainly look at it that way because, you know, like right now while we are awake and using our literal minds, the subconscious mind is also awake and paying attention, but we're not in the subconscious mind, but it's still there and it's working and it's gathering data and it's, it's memory consolidating and it's also thinking. You know, you, you, we have our conscious thought right now. We're using to communicate with each other and to focus on work or whatever, but the subconscious is also 
very active at the same time, looking deeper into what we're doing and taking notes. And so when we go to sleep at night and we turn out our lights and we turn off the TV and we close our eyes, we go deeper and deeper into our mind till we the subconscious meets us there and says, okay, I've got you now. We're going to discuss things that you're ignoring or mishandling while you're awake. I've been taking uh, notes. Wow. That's and, so cool. Uh, you know what? I, I'm going to tie something together here. I think shipping itself is kind of like dreaming awake. We're kind of uh, dreaming of these scenarios that aren't necessarily the, uh, the normal dimension that we exist in. We're kind of creating another, we're dreaming about this character and this character being, being together. Shipping is kind of a dream state in itself. Right. Wow, that was really deep. It's like, deep, right? Hey, no, hey, just Lori. Saying, uh, <laughs> hey, Lori, just for fun. Oh, no, I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> she Lori, knows, Tara. It's just fun to make Greg feel crazier than he is. Hey, <laughs> just because we have you, have you here, what does a spider dream mean? Oh, spiders in dreams. Okay. Typically, a spider in a dream will symbolize deceit or a web of lies. Of course, mm. you always have to put your own personal associations of a spider dream. Like, for example, I used to have a pet tarantula. So for me, a spider oh. might mean something different. Yeah, his name right. was Meatloaf. He was so cute. <laughs> but typically, you know, this Oh, my spider... gosh, I have a spider right here. Oh, there you yeah, go. you do. There you go. It's, called, it's a love spider. <laughs> oh, it is a love spider. You know, spiders are known for spinning webs. So we can associate them with a web of lies. Also, the web is made to trap. So, you know, are you in a situation where you feel trapped by a web of either your own lies or someone around you, you feel is not being, you know, uh, honest with you. But the personal associations are really important when figuring out a dream because there are, you know, the, the generic archetypical meanings, but we all have our own personal experiences. Like the other day, I was helping with a client with a spider dream. So I asked her, I said, okay, if I didn't know what a spider was, or you were trying to write a spider definition for Webster's, what would you say? And she said, well, they're home invaders. And I was like, okay, is there anyone in your life who feels like invading your space? And she was like, yes, my ex. Mm. He came back and I can't get him to leave. <laughs> oh. Wow, wow. Do you suggest for the for people watching to write their to, to write their dreams down after they yes. have them? Does that help? One of the best things you can ever do for yourself is keeping a dream journal. But it's also important you keep a dream journal in tandem with a day journal. Because mm. you know, your dreams are a commentary on your previous day. First of all, it's important to remember that we all dream every single night. Whether you remember it or not, you're dreaming every 90 minutes. So on a good night, you can get five or more dreams. Um, a lot of us just don't remember them. So we think, oh, I, I can't remember last time I dreamed. Well, you dreamt last night. You just don't remember it. So in order mm. to remember it, when you wake up, it's crucial that you stay in the exact same position you woke up in because that's the position your body was in when you were dreaming. And if you mm. pull over and move, it's like you unplug yourself from the dream you were like in seconds uh, ago. So right. stay put, quiet your mind, give yourself three minutes, quiet. Perfect. Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> and let the dream come back to you. And then whatever you remember, even if all you remember is, I just remember seeing this cat. Great. Write that down. You got to write it down as soon as you wake up, because if you don't, it'll be gone after breakfast. We lose almost all the so content quick. of our dream within 90 seconds of waking if we don't write it down. So true. Wow, wow, wow. You do want to keep a dream journal. That's number one. And you want to keep it in tandem with the day journal. And what I suggest is keep them both in the same journal. And then you're going to write at bedtime before you go to sleep. Write down your day on your left side, your biggest struggle that day, your conversations, what affected you the most. Write all that down on your left side and go to sleep. When you wake up, write down your dreams on the right side. So then you have them next to each other so you can more easily connect the dots between the two. You also want to title your dream as if it were a movie. You know, if mm. you can sum it all up into the title of a movie, that step alone can be very insightful and eye-opening. And then you also want to look at the outstanding emotion in your dream. Was it constant frustration? Well, what happened yesterday that was the most frustrating? That's what your dream's trying to help you with. It's, you just connect the dots. And then you'll see how your dream is really helping you with that particular issue. Can you, like, before you go to sleep, have an intention and control 
some of your dream content? Like, let's say like, I just don't want to dream about this again, or I don't want to dream about this horror movie that I saw before bed. Is there a way to sort of steer your dream before you fall asleep? Yeah, it's easier to condition yourself to dream about something instead of avoiding dreaming about something. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So the, the best way to avoid dreaming about something is to figure out what it's commenting on and then correct that issue because then you won't give that dream a reason to come back because you've taken care of the issue it was commenting on. It's called dream incubation is what you're talking about where you kind of train yourself to dream about a particular thing. But I like to call it dreaming on demand where, you know, say you just want to have a really hot dream about Johnny Depp, for example. Or Greg Sipes. Yes. Why not? <laughs> Anyone can do it Greg all day. <laughs> watch, you know, watch things Listen up how done. to do this. <laughs> watch things he's done. Talk about him, you know, especially right before bed. Write out a little scenario of how you'd like that dream to go. And then as you're drifting off, think about it because that stream of consciousness as you drift into sleep continues on once you enter REM sleep. And so this is how you can control your, control what you dream about. I would bet um, comic book artists are often inspired by dreams. Yeah. It's such a fantastical free world. Like when I speak to comic artists, they're all saying like, I'm living out my childhood dream. It's like a kid's dream to write comics. And so I'm sure a lot of the inspiration for any um, superhero comes from dreamland. I mean, everybody wants to fly in a dream or have Mm -hmm. invisibility or telekinesis, you know, probably much of the superhero world has been inspired by dreams. Tara, you can be Lori's assistant dream uh, analysis. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. not yet, not yet, not yet. Maybe well, I have to say, this is kind of this has been really special. I feel like I'm yes. dreaming. Yes, aw- I, I feel like I'm dream- dreaming awake. So, so, thank you so much for being on our show. Yes, thank you, Lori. That was have you so come back on. awesome. Yeah, we'd love to have you back. And tell everybody again where they can find you, real quick. Yep, you can find me online. Just Google Dream Expert and. Laurie Lowenberg, that's me. That'll be the first thing that comes up. That's where you can set up a, a reading with me over the phone. And you can find me on Instagram at Laurie Lowenberg, all one word, L-A-U-R-I-L-O-E. Start typing that, it'll pop up. Yeah. That's where you can see my artwork. And uh, on Twitter, I am at Laurie Lowenberg. Or if you put at the Dream Expert, that'll pull me up also. It's also really easy to book on your website online too, which is awesome and great, okay, especially good. during like COVID time to be able to connect. Yes. I bet you've been busier than ever. <laughs> you know, COVID's actually been really good for my career. I could, I could see that. <laughs> People are having yeah. longer and more vivid dreams because we're sleeping in because we don't have to get up to the alarm. So wow, that's yeah. Cool. yeah, plus I imaginations are all fear-based crazy yes. and so much going on in the world yes. right now. Amazing. And for all you ship it showers, if you want to dream about me all day long, you can just go to <laughs> at Greg Sipes on Instagram and just consume all they my pictures. They know how to find videos, you. Music, they know. About me, talk about me all day long. No, I'm just saying if you want to like up your, if you want to dream about me tonight. Listen, I've dreamt about, about Greg. It's not, it wasn't that great. Um, <laughs> thanks for joining us, Laurie. <laughs> Thank you, darlings. Yeah. Oh, sweet dreams. <laughs> thanks, thanks. <laughs> I can interpret dreams. Throw one, throw one yeah. at me. Throw a couple at me. Okay, I I dream that we all get together to do another Spider Man series. Oh yeah, that'd be great. And we were all on it together, and we won an Emmy, and yeah. and you were and, there. And it's and it's dreams CG. come true, Tara. Dreams it's come true. CG and. <laughs> And yeah, that's amazing. I actually love the animation of Spider Verse. I thought that was so cool. It's it's so many. Start to finish. Yeah. It's so many. We were saying it it encapsulates the idea of a multiverse because it's more than one style of animation. It's like all these different versions and all these different worlds brought together. It was just picture perfect. Uh, Amazing. I was riveted the whole the whole freaking time. Since we're having an ultimate Spider Man reunion, I'd like to mention just a couple casty trivia secrets yeah uh one of which is terry you were the first person cast i don't even know if we did an audition because i knew i wanted you for the part you were just so perfect for it because all the things we mentioned earlier but also working closely with stan lee um and then the sides for iron fist and power man didn't have those characters listed 
Now I had met Greg once and knew that I want, I, we wanted Iron Fist to be so Zen, Paul Dini and I had talked a lot about how we wanted these characters to play out. And Greg sort of embodied the character, like he could bring so much depth to that character. And then we knew that we wanted Power Man to be kick, but we wanted to be confident and strong. You can say ass on our <laughs> ass, show. Ass, <laughs> And then, <laughs> I, and my backup for White Tiger, believe it or not, and I'm kicking myself to this day, was Zendaya. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, yeah. oh, that would be amazing. Uh, I said no, she was the uh, second choice. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's all right, that's okay. Yeah. Wow. I so, still want the shot. I still want the shot of yeah. playing Iron Fist in the live action show. There you go. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, Tara's dream is going to come so, true. We're all going to work together again on a Spider-Man thing. And, yeah. And oh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's, we're dreaming awake now. Of course. And I think we got to bring Lindsay back just because she's... Absolutely. I was thinking, um, yeah, she keep her in mind for, for casting, for sure. Greg's like, did you get her contact? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> this is all professional. Uh, it's a show all about love, right? Uh, uh, it's, not a dating, it's not a dating show for you. <laughs> What was her Instagram um, handle again? Uh, <laughs> okay, so before we wrap up again, can you please all take the time to tell us where to find you on social media, just so we have it one more time. Hey, I'm Kevin Shinnick. You can find me at, at Kevin Shinnick, S-H-I-N-I-C-K, on that's on all the Twitter handles and stuff and, and Instagram. And and I also actually have a, uh, a new Spider-Man comic coming out at the end of this year called Web. Oh, so keep, in, keep oh, an eye out for wow. that. And where, I mean, it's such a crazy time. I guess you'd find that on Amazon. Like, where will that be? You know, they some do? comic shops are still open, but you can also download them on iPads and, and things like that. I, you know, I have a, 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 a series of Flash comics coming out over the next month so i got that going on oh, wow. and uh and then spider-man hopefully by the end of the year it's all it's all up to them they have it they're just waiting to time it with something incredible kevin like what a lovely like dream come true like doesn't every little kid want to be able to create their own comics <laughs> it is true wow. it is true. kevin what's Living that the dream and what's that cool art behind you on the wall so tara and i met when we were doing mad i turned mad magazine into an animated sketch comedy show oh, and at wow. the end as my gift to the crew was i had tom richmond who is the mort drucker of the current magazine draw all their caricatures as the behind the scenes type thing so that and i kept I the original that. i was no fool Oh, I love that. I love that show so much. You know what else I loved about your show is I remember reading the Mad Comics as kids, and I always loved like the little tiny comics at the top. And the yes, top of Sergio thing. stuff. Yes. And I, yeah, and I always felt like our show had a like a flavor of yeah. that going on with all the extra little characters. Totally did. And that was the great thing about that show was it had the stamp of approval from all those people. Sergio Aragonis was drawing those margins in our show. It's like wow. What more can we ask Amazing. for? Amazing. I was really bummed when it got canceled. You That's, and I you know, both. Like, another dream. Bring it back. There you go. I think, there you go. There's Bring it another back. One. I know. It's so Kevin, true. Kevin, thank you so much for Guys, joining thank us. you. Okay, Court, tell everybody where to find you. If there's anything up and coming you want to share. There's nothing I'm allowed to talk about yet, but you can find me on Instagram, Cortoon, C O R T O O N S underscore. And it was delightful to be here with you, Goddess Tara and Shaman Greg, and really miss seeing your faces, Kevin and OG. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And great. I really, really appreciate great. all your help. Court's always someone saying, hey, this guy did this yeah. art and this girl did this comic. And from the start, I told him about this idea and he loved it so much. And really, I would love one day if you shared the pictures of all your cosplay. Yeah. You're so yeah. fucking hot. Your body is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> you're amazing. Yeah. You, you make every character look good and, and you're always getting great suggestions for ships. So we hope to have you on again. And Court is 82 years old. Look how good he looks. <laughs> <laughs> OG, OG, yeah. tell everyone where to find uh, you and if you have anything up and coming yeah, you that you want to share. Yeah, you can find me at OG Banks, O-G-I-E-B-A-N-K-S on all social media. Um, uh, with all the NDAs that we sign, I can't talk about anything. I know, no one can talk about anything. <laughs> no, I know. nothing. It's like, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> telepathically, Aww. telepathically tell everybody. Yeah. Oh, congrats, OG. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Gonna be fun. Wow, Watch wow, amazing. Spider Man on Disney Plus. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. I like it. I like it. All right, everybody. I think that's end of show. Thank you for joining us. It's such a fantastic. I mean, we could do 10 episodes on this ship, and it's just a beautiful love story. And so, thank you all for sharing this with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Ship and show. Uh, that was that episode might be my favorite one so far, which is I know it's a hard what? thing to 
Every time it's getting better and better and better. I know, there's not one better than the other, but ultimately I just really love today's show. It was so cool to hear these old stories of Stan Lee interacting with you, Tara, and, and all our guests on the show today. Just magical, magical stories that you can only hear here on The Shippet Show, which I, I'm just honored to yeah. be able to hold the space for Stan Lee's spirit to, to, to speak to everybody through his art and still live. And we, we were so grateful to you, Stan Lee. I love also just exploring love in the fandom. It's like this one area of the fandom gets no love and it's about love. So we are so excited and thank you for joining us this week for MJ and Spider-Man. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave us a comment yeah. in the podcast section and look for us next week. And adopt dogs and cats. Peace, love, and animals, y'all. <laughs>